What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the pod at the Palace. Curtis Wilkerson, Scotty Borderline here with you, as always, from Natty State Sports Studios in downtown Fayetteville. A double pod Monday. Hmm. Live at 6 p.m. Hmm. That could only mean one thing. What'd you drag me in here for? Oh, buddy. Coach Cal is on the board, my man. Coach Cal is officially on the board. Arkansas fans, you can take a big exhale. All is right in the world again. Um, hey, listen. Big Z. He's locked down. The Croatian sensation, seven foot two big man, Savanimir Avisic, has announced his transfer commitment from Kentucky to Arkansas. He's going to look good in that Razorback red, man. Um, this is a big deal. Big yes. deal. Your, your foundation piece is in place to build around. There are going to be some big time guards out there that Arkansas is going to be all over trying to get in here. But the fact of the matter, Scotty, is like they just, they don't grow seven foot two skilled big men on trees. Like this is a massive, massive get for Arkansas. It is. And that's why, and I don't, I normally don't like to do this, but I saw that there was a, um, like one of the more prominent Kentucky voices was like a replacement will be in a Kentucky in no time. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, like you just said, seven foot two centers don't grow on trees. Mobile seven two centers don't grow on trees. Um, mobile seven two centers who have block rates north of eleven percent don't grow on trees. Um, all like you're not. That's not an easy replacement. Which means Arkansas just got a really good player. Yeah, yeah, got absolutely. Really that sounds like some copium. Coming from BBN it's crazy. is what that sounds like to me. That that's nuts. Yeah. Uh, no, this is a this is a big deal, folks. Get in the chat and tell us how you're feeling. Spread the good vibes. We're live. Um, I I mean, we had a sense that this was coming, and I think we kind of had that sense. I don't know about the time Cal was announced uh, as as the new coach at Arkansas, and and he officially hit the portal Saturday night sometime, and you know he uh, he heard out Mark Pope. At Kentucky, had that meeting with him today, and, and decided he was going to head down to uh, to Fayetteville where he, he said, belongs. Nope. Yeah, nope to Pope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do want to read his announcement. Uh, really good stuff, and I think this is going to be a maybe the first sign of, of why people are going to like him so much. But in his announcement, he said, "Today I met with Coach Pope and had a great meeting with him. He's an amazing guy and a great coach, and will do big things here." After our conversation, I informed him that I will not be returning to Kentucky. Big Blue Nation. My amazing teammates, I love you, and this has been the best experience a kid from Croatia could ask for coming to the U.S. You took me as one of your own since the first moment, and the love just grew. From the billboard to countless other things you've done to show love, I mean, come on, who does that? I will forever be grateful for that, and it will have a special place in my heart. With all that being said, I made the lifetime decision to come to college for a few reasons. Main one, to win a national championship and go to the NBA. Monumental part of that decision was Coach Cal, and no one does both of those at the same time than him. That's why I'm excited to announce that I am committing to Coach Cal and the Arkansas Razorbacks, Wu Pig Suey. He got Wu Pig Suey right. He did. That I appreciate. <laughs> I thought this was a really that man because that was a, a situation for those who are unfamiliar with Big Z and his and his story. He uh it was a rough go for him. I mean, coming over from Croatia, he wasn't eligible right away. There was this whole campaign put together by Coach Cal, Big Blue Nation, in fairness to them, uh, everybody involved to get him cleared, get him eligible. He mentioned the billboard that they basically wound up raising funds to have put up for him, for, you know, freezy, and uh, it, it wound up going down there. So I'm glad that he showed uh, showed a lot of love and appreciation for that. For sure. uh, and then he kept it real with Coach Cal. And this, people, that that statement he made about John Calipari is why you should rest easy knowing that he is going to build a winning roster here, even if there's only one guy on it now. One more guy than there was about an hour ago. Yeah. But he got a <laughs> lot of work to do. They're going to get it done. Be fine. For sure. Um, I wrote in the – I posted a, the, the commitment story earlier – uh, there's probably some people wondering why he only played 15 games last season. Um, I found a story in The Athletic that because he played for a professional team in Europe, he needed to provide sufficient proof that he maintained amateur status by not receiving compensation beyond necessary expenses. So that that explains at least part of it. There was a big – like the NCAA, you know, had a lengthy examination into his eligibility. Um, and the thing that – 
I've seen some comments already, like show me the difference in him and Connor Vanover. Jesus and, Christ. Um, <laughs> Did somebody really say that? Yeah. <laughs> and just somebody like basically wanting, wanting us to like sell them on Big Z. And the only thing I can say is just like watch the highlight tape that we've linked in the story. Yeah. Um, go to College Basketball Scouting on YouTube, find Zvonimir Visage highlights from last year, and you'll see it. Like, you'll 100% see it. It's all due respect to Connor. Like, he's not Connor. Right. Um, he is a couple levels, if not several levels, above what Connor Vanover can bring to your team. Um, he's just – he's exactly what you want in modern basketball, like a – a seven foot guy that can run runs on his toes and not like a lot of big He's guys they, a lot of a lot of big guys like lumber down the floor mm -hmm. you know what i mean it almost feels like they're running on their heels this guy doesn't do that and he's got like we were watching highlights earlier today and tyler was intern tyler was watching too and he was like man i didn't realize he had the had the shot on him like that he that shot is it's got a little strap on him it's nice um and the thing that I'll say is Kentucky got a good taste of what the kid is. Arkansas is going to get the whole dish exactly. because he is going to play, barring something super unforeseen, the whole year. And if all goes well, he's only going to be here one year, but it's probably right. going to be a hell of a year. That was a bar, by the way. just want to let you know that that was a bar. That was a good one. And you're 100% <laughs> right. He's going to be... So much better next year, uh, and I'm and I'm, I'm He's really a looking guy forward. That you can't just go to ESPN.com and look at his stats. No, no, you can, you absolutely can't, you not. Can't, can't do that. Yeah, I have I have two declarations that I want to make on on Big Z. Uh, before I do, though, real quick, I just want to remind you guys about our, our friends over at Signature Bank. Uh, Signature is a privately held boutique bank that's redefining the banking experience in our region. They blend the warmth and familiarity of a community bank with the sophistication of a commercial bank and the expertise of private banking to deliver unmatched levels of service. Looking for some reasons to bank with Signature? They're personally invested, business-minded, community-focused, right-sized, and forward-thinking. Make sure you check out one of their locations in Arkansas or visit www.signature.bank to learn more. Two declarations I have on Big Z. One, he is going to be an absolute fan favorite in Fayetteville. This dude is going to be beloved. I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, you could tell by just his demeanor on the court. You can tell by his announcement with Kentucky. And if you paid attention to him at all, uh, you're going to know that he's he's got some personality to him. It, people are going to absolutely love this dude. And I can't wait for him to get down here and, and for everybody to get that experience. I see Wright's Barbecue is already trying to think up a sandwich. To name after him. Did you see that? I <laughs> did not. Yeah, Jordan but Wright's smart, all over man. it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Get the on big it. Z. <laughs> it's easy. It's right there. Yeah. And, you know, in a, in a lot of cases, you see a dude who's like a seven foot two European post player, and you think that he, he probably needs to eat a bunch of sandwiches from Wright's. And that's really not the case with with Big Z here. Zvonimir Avisic really rolls off the tongue. It does. Yeah. But, He's uh he's got some meat on his bones T and to move as well as he does I think he's what's he listed at seventy two two thirty two thirty four two thirty four okay yeah uh, so he's not a not a small dude by any means he's gonna add a little bit of toughness and, and physicality in there even though he's more of a, a finesse modern big like you mentioned but I said he's gonna be a fan favorite my other declaration Scotty is I I think he's gonna be an All SEC caliber center next season I feel really confident in saying that. Like you said, you can't go to ESPN.com and just look at his stats to get a vibe for it. We know that he was a late arrival onto the floor for his for his eligibility reasons. He averaged five and a half points, three point three rebounds, one point three blocks in just under twelve minutes per game last season. I'm telling you right now, you can double all of those stats, all of them. Right? There's just no doubt in my mind that he's he's going to be that kind of player. And the beauty of it is, and we talked about it a little bit earlier on our morning show today. Is he's not a dude. I mean, he he was he was very productive in 12 minutes per game. You could play him 20 minutes per game and, and get super high level production out of him and still have room to go out and add another, not a not a role player, but a dude in the front court. Yeah. And it's and it won't be too crowded. And I think that's what I love about this pickup the most. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm just I keep I can't get over the, the fan over comment. I just I can't. That's wild behavior. I'm sorry. Dude. 
That's, um, that's a choice to for anybody to put that <laughs> to to take the time to type that with their thumbs and then hit post. Like yeah. That was a good idea. That's that's wild. I mean, man. it's um, <laughs> this kid jumped in in the middle of SEC play. I'm sure he was practicing and whatnot against some really really talented guys. Right, like that was that Kentucky roster was one of the most talented, if not the most talented in the SEC. He jumps into the middle of conference play. Like, he, his first game was January 20th. Mm-hmm. And, like, he didn't play more than 21 minutes in any game. So, on one hand, I don't even know that he's played enough to pass judgment on him to say that he's not who everybody <laughs> says he is. Right. But in that s- small sample size, you got enough – of a glimpse of what he can do to know that he's like with more time going to be somebody. Yes. That it's just as simple as that, dude. Like, and it's, I'm not blowing him up saying that he's going to be an all American, but the I potential am. to be an all American <laughs> is right there. Yeah. It's right there. He just needs more time and he's with Cal dude. And like the other point that I wanted to make tonight to make sure that I made last year, Arkansas fans worried constantly and we're talking constantly, understandably, about team first guys mm-hmm. and guys who were bought in, all in. That was that was Arkansas's freaking mantra last year, and like that it was just it hilarious. Was major hat. It's hilarious looking <laughs> yeah. back at it. But you are not going to have a guy on your roster. I feel like more all in, bought in on what your coach and the coaching staff is telling you than this kid. He has literally followed him to a different country into different schools, multiple schools in a different country. The trust and the belief in Cal is real. It's there. He's going to be bought in day one, no question about it. You're not going to have to worry about him. Isn't that what you want? Absolutely, what man. You want. I mean, if I am Boogie Fland or DJ Wagner, who has firsthand experience, or Tyrese Hunter, who just hit the portal, or insert whatever lead guard out there, that is available, Big Z is the type of big that I want to play with. Yeah. Because he commands attention at all at, at, at every level of the floor. And if you gamble defensively, he's there to protect you if you get burnt. And all you gotta do is throw it up near the rim and he can go get it. And he's a he's a point guard's dream, man. Yeah. And he can pick and pop. Absolutely. So yeah. this this is not only a big deal for Arkansas in terms of of having the foundation piece in the front court. For, for their roster, but it's also a big boost for recruiting moving forward. Cal can sell himself. Arkansas can sell itself. But to be able to take a dude like that and say, hey, guards, you want somebody to be able to, to lob that thing up to, somebody who can clean up your misses, somebody who can protect the rim when you make a mistake, that matters to yeah. guys. And yeah. so this is a, it, it's a big deal, man. I'm excited about it. 100%. Yeah, that's a, definitely a point guard's dream. And some of the – like watching that tape earlier, like I mentioned, anytime he gets a rebound and there is a guard, you know, near the 28-foot marker or just straight up ahead of him in the backcourt, he's pushing the ball ahead. Yeah. That's the type of game he wants to play. Um, <sighs> like you mentioned, he can pick and pop, and when he rolls, he keeps that ball high, dude. See, so like if you keep the ball here, the ball is at seven feet. Exactly. <laughs> and like whoever is at the rim is just – and he, he's really – like he gets up quick. Gets up really quick, puts the ball down quick. Um, that jumper is just, it's poetry. Um, intern Tyler was saying Larry Bird every time he let go of a three. <laughs> I don't, it, it's, it's really pretty. It's, um, I'm excited. I'm excited. Now I'm, I'm going to be, I hate to already be looking ahead because this is a huge deal. Like this is a yep. send a message type commitment from, from Z and, and Cal and everybody. No doubt. Um, but yeah, I'm, Interested to see who Z is is going to make better, yeah. With just sharing the floor with him, absolutely. Yeah, and if you haven't, yeah, go check out his highlights on our on our story at at DannyStateSports dot com. Check out his his Georgia debut. I mean, just you just need three minutes to watch that, and and you're going to understand why we're so excited about this. Yeah. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. It's a big deal. And man, oh man, did Arkansas fans need this today. Thank you, Coach Cal, for giving these crazy people a commitment today. 
I've never, and it's nuts because people, the people were crazy about must during portal season, the importer, all that. I have never been blown up as much in the last 24 to 48 hours about transfers, commitments, recruiting, what's going on than I have the last couple of days. And I like giving people, giving people crap about it, but I love it. Sure. The, like the, the excitement and the anticipation and just the, like you scratch the itch today, so thank you. But but people are still starving for it. Sure. And as much as we see the whole deal about Kentucky and their press conference yesterday, and how Mark Pope kind of reinvigorated that fan base, Cal has done that with with this Arkansas fan base. And I realize that that the Hogs are coming off just one disappointing year, but I said it after that Vanderbilt loss in Bud Walton Arena. It was like it felt like a funeral in there. It just did. 100%. And everybody was out on that team. The place was less than half full. It, it wasn't a good situation. And everyone entered the offseason under Muss, fair or not, just skeptical. And it almost felt like uh, just a matter of time before it was over. Yeah. And again, it sounds crazy given everything he did. And I'm not taking away anything that Muss did because he was, he was tremendous here. And if it wasn't for him, Arkansas wouldn't be able to have a guy like Cal right now. But this program almost needed that jolt as well. And and I think we're seeing that now with just how crazy excited everybody is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've loved doing this podcast together ever since we started doing it. But toward the end of the regular season, it was just like we were we were ready for the season to end too, just to look forward to something that people were gonna be interested in, excited about. Um and thank you all for listening because y'all really have lot y'all are dialed in ever since the season has ended and especially since the uh the cal the calipari news and obviously big z is just a it's a splash man it really is like that's a that's a big boy jumping into the shallow end splash to, to get, the, <laughs> yeah. get the roster started it is um, major cannonball vibes <laughs> i pulled up his uh big z's cbb analytics page and wanted to go through a couple of different things. His uh, block percentage, 11.4%, 99th percentile nationally. Um, that Hakeem percentage, which I've told you about before, is the block percentage and the steal percentage combined. It's uh, 13%, 99th percentile nationally. Um, also 99th percentile nationally in blocks per personal fouls. Um, 0.87 blocks per personal foul committed, which is it's really good. like 99th percentile will tell you it's good, but yeah. I mean you don't need to you don't even need to see the percentile to know that's really good. Uh, true shooting percentage, 98th percentile, 67.3 percent. Like the kid's just he's efficient. It's efficient on both ends. Just give him time, and he he's going to be twice, if not three x, what little we saw of him last year. Yeah, he's been great. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I see we're gonna we're gonna get to the chat here in, in just a minute. And that's the best part about going live. Like people are excited. I love going through the the comments and questions. I've already seen like 20. Well, who's next? That's fair. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if if I had to guess, Carter Knox, maybe would would be next up there. Yeah. Uh, but there's been a lot that's happened today. I mean, DJ Wagner officially came available. I know that he's he's wide open, so that might take a little bit with him. Um, you know, Quaintance, a guy that we've talked about quite a bit, he's open. He's got a, a a visit set to Louisville, so that might take a little bit. Boogie Flan, same situation. I think Arkansas has got a got a very real shot with pretty much all these guys. Yeah. But in terms of timetable, I don't really know. And then they're also working on on transfers on the back end. But sure. the the beauty of it is, once the first domino falls, it, it really it usually starts to pick up. And I know he's still finalizing his staff and everything like that as as well. So it's coming, you know. Yeah. Who's it going to be? I'm not sure. I, if I had to take a guess, I'd, I'd probably say Knox. When's that going to be? I don't know, man. I don't want to put any more guesses out there because I I thought they'd have a you know a couple guys by the end of the weekend. They didn't, and everybody was mad at me. So you know, yeah, it's okay. Stuff happens, man. Stuff I do happens. like the Tyrese Hunter addition to the portal. Did you see that? Oh, I did see that. Yeah, yeah. I think he just needed a change of scenery because he was so good at Iowa State, and he he was so he was really good his first year at Texas. Maybe didn't make the jump that I thought he would, but you know, hasn't he? Yeah, so he was. Just, he just finished a second year. I was thinking that he was a guy that had bounced around to like 
three different schools already, but gotcha. just Iowa State, Texas, two years. Yeah, he's a he's what you want in a point guard. For I'll sure. say he's God, he's tough. Yeah. Really tough. Could shoot it. High assist guy. He just yeah, I I love him. But yeah, I would uh I would not mind talking about Jaden Quinnett soon and that's not a that's not a personal prediction. I I don't know. Um I just want to lay out there to everybody what I've gathered watching him in the McDonald's All American game twice now. Yeah, no doubt about <laughs> I just, it. I really dialed in on him a couple of times when I've watched the I was watching it like I took like I said on this morning's pod when you walked in this morning, I was just like I had I just had to watch him again. He's that kind of guy. You just you right. want to watch him even when you don't have to. And I, I think Arkansas is in a better spot there than than maybe they get credit for from Kentucky media. And it's, that's not a shot at Kentucky media, but it, it's just some things don't quite add up there in terms of maybe the the family was upset about how everything went down with with Cal taking the Arkansas job, and maybe he didn't know. But then at the same time, you have a guy like Samto Cyril who decommits from that class and he does an interview and he says, no, nah, like Cal, Cal called me and, and filled me in on everything that was going to go on beforehand. So he just, he just, he called one guy and not the others. I, I don't know. So that just seems interesting to me, but, but by all accounts, I've received is that Arkansas is very much on the table for him and full disclosure. Like I, I think that might come down to, you know, NIL as it should for, yeah. for a guy who's 16 years old and, you know, pushing 6'10 and 230-some-odd pounds and can shoot it and handle it like a guard and, and dunk on people's head, and he has to play two years of college basketball. Yeah, like I, you said this morning, he's got a lot of leverage. Got a lot he, of leverage, yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. Let's go to these comments. This is awesome. We're, we'll, we'll roll through the fun ones quick, and then we'll, <laughs> we'll obviously stop and talk about the questions. Counts. Big Z. Young Sea Lion. Let's go. <laughs> Way weary. Big Z. That that was everybody before we even started. Uh, these comments were coming in. We got some Woo Pig Sueys in here. Thomas Reynolds says Carter Knox on deck. Uh, that'd be a that'd be nice. That'd be a pretty good start. How about how about no that doubt. for week one? Wouldn't yeah. that be fun? Yeah. I think I'd be okay with that. Big Z to the hill, big Z in the house. Everybody loves it, man. Very good. It's good to see Arkansas fans excited. You guys were really excited last week, and then the last couple of days, your little He's getting a little restless on us. I saw a young C-line with this comment, and then literally a couple seconds later, he was like, yeah, my kid's smashing the keyboards. I can re- that's, I've can. i never related to anything I thought more. he was just so excited he seized out a little bit on the, <laughs> on the keyboard, man. I, more. <laughs> I love a couple of these here. James C. says, uh, it's about time we get a recruit. Now we have two players. And, and then Thomas Reynolds says, Lawson Blake is a true Razorback for staying. Hey, you got, uh, you got the Twin Towers, the Brothers of Destruction right now. What more do you need? They finally got Lawson Blake some damn help. Yeah. It's about time. Yeah. Good it compliment. is about time. Good compliment to him. Yeah, there we go. Big, big Z and LB down low, baby. I like it. <laughs> People forget Lawson had a uh, and one against Georgia. Those he dudes, did. Ju- those dudes just roast Georgia. That's, that's, I love what, they're, it. that's what they're about. <laughs> STL Razor said, we got a boom shakalaka. Okay. There we go. Carter Knox, it's your turn, buddy. Yeah, people are excited. <laughs> okay, Devin, Devin. Ooh, Corey wow. no starts now. Let's, you know, we might pump the brakes on that one a little bit, 39 and 1 or so. I like his optimism. Though. I like his optimism too. But people are excited, man. You love to see it. One down, 12 to go, says Clint Feltz. That is absolutely right. There's still a lot of work to be done. I wonder if they're going to fill all those scholarships. That's what I was about to ask you. Do you think that he might – leave one or a couple open i think he might leave a couple open what would the ben like why would why <laughs> would he do that like what are the benefits of doing that would you say mm. maybe just having more to work with but also just that you know you're going to have to work with but also just, i don't know i i kind of feel like there's something to be said for your first team like every guy you have just having a potential or specific role sure does that make sense yeah like if you have 10 guys then it, it's not like you've always got three or four dudes on the end of the bench who just you know maybe they're yeah. pouting maybe they thought they were going to play because what are you going to do just like your top 10 and, and rock with them yeah and and the other reason is because it, those guys those back end guys they're, they're going to be transfers at this point like there's not there's not that many freshmen for them to go out there and get unless they go the, into international waters and get another big z and i'd be fine with that but 
from the high school ranks, like it's, it's mid April, like all those guys are already accounted for. So you wouldn't really be able to sell the, Hey, young guy, come here, set, develop, and then be ready to go. And then if you bring in a transfer, unless it's a, like a, like a Dennis J Harris type, who's just wants to be part of something that's maybe greater than himself and, and be part of a, a really good team. Yeah. All those guys want to come play, you know? Yeah. And, and so that would probably be my justification for it. And maybe just a time frame thing. Sure. Cause then we look at it and we're like, well, they don't play until November, but like they, they move on to campus in six weeks and start yeah, summer practice. No I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. So they, they got a lot of work to do. I was talking to my kids when I got home about, they asked me how many weeks of school that they had left mm -hmm. and they get out on May 24th. And so that's five weeks from today. And then that full week. And so that would basically be that weekend that they're moving in. They basically got, Five full weeks until yeah, move in. <laughs> That's crazy. It's wild. Sneaking I wanted to run us. this by. Oh, go ahead. Oh, we had a couple people <laughs> said, uh, "Curtis is about to get on with a big old smile." He's a big Z fan. Right down below that, Ethan Feld says, "Curtis is definitely geeking right now." So am I. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can't. I We're mean, geeked I love sure. this. Anyway, carry on. Thoughts on this? Okay. Ooh. Seth Durkin says the Chris Stapps Porzingis of Arkansas. Ooh, I think I really like that comp. I might like that a lot. That's, I hadn't really thought about a comp yet. There aren't many comps to yeah. 7'2", 234, mobile. Floor stretching. Yeah, yeah that's actually, not, that's not a really good comps. one. I like it. I like that a lot. Shout out to Seth. Well that done, was a good Seth. One. That's really good. You know, we go with, whenever we uh, like update the big board and we put builds for the different players. We usually do that based on their physique, but that would kind of work in this case. But then right, we also I didn't even do it for these Kentucky guys because some of them just don't like Z. We were comping them to Arkansas really have guys. One. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have a, yeah, there was not an Arkansas comp to this. Right. Love this. Noble Villain says this kid is supposed to be an absolute baller, isn't he? He's got a, he's got a very, very high ceiling. And he's got a lot of projectables too. So, like he's got to, he has to realize his potential. Don't get me wrong. Um, obviously, you want more production than than they got out of him at Kentucky last year, but we all understand his circumstances now, and he just he screams a prospect that's going to make a make a big leap. I'm excited about him. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Yo, glad I found this pod. Used to ball with Scotty in high school. Buzz Light beer. Buzz Light beer. Who are you? Do you know who yeah, it is? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I would be super interested to find out. Buzz Lightbeer is a fantastic name. No jokes. Maybe we don't even need to know the actual idea. Yeah, show yourself honestly. if you're interested. <laughs> um, let's see here. Count says Big Z will probably come off the bench, though, right? I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, if they get like if they go out and get a Jonas Adu, then yeah, probably or a, or a Big Cliff or something like that. Look, he's not going to be a guy that is upset or disgruntled if he doesn't he no, didn't right he didn't start any game at kentucky last year mm -hmm. um and look if you're expecting big z to be a 25 plus minute per game guy do you think he'll play how much do you think he would play a game 30 is a stretch I, I was thinking like 18 to 22 yeah kind of guy okay he okay. might he might have a game here and there where he plays. I didn't know what you were thinking. Heavy. You were, I didn't know what you were thinking while you were looking at me, but I just oh. I don't think twenty five to thirty. I think that's really pushing it. Yeah. But well, there there will be some games where he's having such a monster impact, probably that right. His minutes will ramp up to that, but um, there's nothing wrong with having a, a a freak coming off your bench, and he's not going to be disgruntled if he right. does. No doubt about it. It'll just depend on how the front court shakes out. If if they go out and add another impact transfer. Uh, then sure, like I could I could see him being the first big off off the bench, and that's a hell of a, <laughs> a hell of a six man there. But if it's let's say it's Z, and maybe they nab their two freshman bigs from that class, Quaintons and Cyril, I, I mean I, he'd probably start. Yeah, Quaintons could start beside him at the four, honestly. But yeah, we'll see. He's he's certainly talented enough to be a starter. Absolutely. Caleb Christian says, crazy to see the amount of Kentucky fans talking ish on him leaving. They're so disconnected with reality. I feel like they talk ish. That isn't anything Kentucky really sad to see. They are Delulu. <laughs> well, they're probably just pissed at that a really good players 
going from Kentucky he to Arkansas their, and following spurned, the old coach. Spurned their new yeah. coach, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd be mad, too. I mean, I, I understand it for every single reason, but I'm still a little salty that T-Mark's going to Texas. Just, yeah. I'm just being honest, you yeah. know? Yeah, that's understandable. So it, um, it probably hurt a little bit just reading his note that he tweeted. It was like, yeah, I met with Coach today, and after I got done talking with him, I was like, I'm not returning. <laughs> that's that's bringing you a little bit back to reality after yesterday's high. Yeah, you know, no doubt about and it. I'm not trying to throw shade. I could just I'm just trying to put myself in the BBN position reading that right. reading that note. That probably. Yeah, and the the other aspect of it probably with the Kentucky fans who are, and it's not all of them. It's it's always a a loud minority. It's same on our end. Same on we our un, end. We understood Tremont Mark right. wanting to transfer, but him going to Texas, you're just like, yeah, Dang exactly. It. And you, you gotta, consider these because you got to play him, right? You consider his situation and the support and the billboard, and that's what I mean. All those factors, people are salty about it. I understand that, but he's it, it's a business decision, man. Sure. Ty Langston said Big Z will do the jump ball and then immediately sub out. This is not the Eric Musselman era of starting Van Over for no reason. Y'all got to get this Van Over thing out of your mind. <laughs> Rewind. I, I know Ty. I, I know Ty knows that this is not the case. He's he's trolling right now, but I hope so. It's yes, we're we're past that. <laughs> I don't I don't think Cal does that. God, I hope he doesn't do that. He used to drive me nuts, man. And Van Over wouldn't even win the jump ball half right, the time. Right. So. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Is this true? Oh, the twin brother thing? Yeah. I saw that earlier. Wait till people finds out find find out Big Z has a twin brother. I need somebody to verify this. His name is Tomislav. Tomislav of Isich? Yeah. Dude. Is he a baller? We don't know. We gotta I'm we gotta look into sure. it a little He's, bit. Uh, I can't find so like I googled uh Avisage twin brothers and Z has a Wikipedia page tells you how big of a deal he is but I can't Love find it. anything on his brother just right off the top. No. Oh. And like if you waited around on me to find it this would be very boring to listen to. Shane Yerby says so he turned down Kentucky. Yes. He did. He he met with the coach this morning and let him know he wasn't coming back, and now he is a hog. Megan said, said, all good vibes here. We need them vibes. Keep them up. So I found his uh, his Kentucky bio, Nicola, Helena, and Tomislav. Tomislav's the twin brother you're talking about. Um, Tomislav is Zvonimir's great, life's greatest influence. Um, likes playing video games, favorite movies, Harry Potter. Uh, he listens to Lil Baby, <laughs> my guy. Little Dirk and Drake before games. Um, dunked for the first time at age 12. So I believe cash, all of those casual. things. <laughs> I believe all those things. This is interesting from Dalton's Motorsports. He says, this feels like a Brazil-like take. Didn't have off-the-chart stats, but obvious talent won't take, won't take too uh, long to truly develop. Yeah, I remember trying to sell people on Brazil right away because I was I was really high on him. And then when he committed to Arkansas, that I was getting the same thing where people were just posting his stats. I'm like, what am I missing here? Well, the eye test is what Brazil pa uh, yeah. passed. And obviously it didn't, didn't work out the way we thought it would with the injuries and everything else. But this is kind of the same idea where it's just this guy who's got so much visible, obvious ability that you feel really good about it translating to an even higher level. For sure. I did find <clears throat> a Tomislava visage on Eurobasket. Dot com and he's seven one. So that's what did intern Will do? I don't know. Did he break this thing? <laughs> I don't know. Was he on with John today? What was going on? He may have. I don't saw know. the tweet. Yeah, there that may. Have, yeah, that may have happened. Oh boy. Sure. I'm. Um, I like that a lot. I found out this happened because I got your tweet notification that said boom. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies if I look a little bit Bob the tomato ish. I was standing over a pot of boiling water making Cajun pasta for dinner and got Curtis's tweet notification. I was like, well, I guess I better get this story up. <laughs> yeah, I just texted you and I was like, headed the office. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, man. Okay. Woo Hog says, this is awesome. Love Pot at the Palace too. Woo Pig Suey. Appreciate that. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, hmm. I can't even pronounce that one. It says, what he don't think Pope can do that for him. Boah ha. Ha ha. Listen, this is a relationship follow. Right. Yeah. It just is. And that's it's not that's yeah, it's what, not personal. He that's he what probably everybody's been, been talking about like this is why you make the Calipari hire because he's like he can just get guys because of who he is. Yeah. And the weight that he, he it's pulls. a deal where he probably would be a great fit in Pope's offense. It's just an unknown though. And with Cal, it the track record speaks for itself, man. I mean, fifty eight draft picks. That's when you've got that dream and you travel to a different continent to play basketball for a guy because that's that's where you want to get to, you you ride with him. It's just and who's just business. Who, who man. was one of the guys fighting fighting like crazy for him to get eligible? Right. Cal. Yeah. Yeah. This, it's, I mean, this it's is, a it's a very sensical move, in it my really opinion. Is. <laughs> like, I don't I don't, no, I don't no think it's very controversial here. No need to complicate this. Warrior Way says, give me Knox, Wagner, and JQ next. Okay, if they if they get all three of those guys, let's say it happens in that order, people are going to be unreasonably excited. Like yeah. It's going to be irrational, the amount of trash talk and uh, just <laughs> off-the-wall stuff that we're going to get. But people still won't be satisfied. We'll still be getting DMs every 30 seconds about who's next, you know? I see, Luz, see Buzz Lightbeer made another comment, but I don't think he didn't put his name out there, which mm. is understandable, but glad you're here. Good call by Corey Smith here. We'll go through a few more minutes here, and, and we'll get out of here. Uh, Corey Smith says, if you extrapolate out his stats for 40 minutes, this guy is a monster. That's true. I mean, he played less than 12 minutes per game. What per 40 stat would you want? Anything. Um, blocks per minute. <laughs> blocks per 40, four and a half. Yeah. Let's do rebounds. Um, offensive rebounds, 3.6. Defensive rebounds, 7.5. Let's do points now. 18.8. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. Sold? It's pretty good. Come on, man. Yeah, I'm sold. Tiffany Cross says, BBN always using the billboard against him. We should get him a welcome billboard. I agree. I agree. We'll start the GoFundMe for it. No doubt. <laughs> Put it on, um, cover the windows up in our office so the sun won't beat down on us at from 4 to 5 in the afternoons. That'd be nice. Count says cope with Pope. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. This is really good. I saw a Devo comment in here earlier. A Devo comment. Just, it's we're getting a little bit sideways, but I do I do know he was at Grand Canyon yesterday, and then according to his Instagram story, he was at FAU earlier today. Seth Durkin says Big Z has more potential than Zach Eady. Pro potential. Pro potential, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't I, expect him to be Zach Eady I though. Mean, he's not. I mean, this <laughs> don't, is not. Don't a, do that. This is not a twenty-four and fourteen type of guy. Right. But. Yeah. I appreciate that comment, though. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Cole Daniel said he's closer to Wimby than he is to Vanover. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but he's not. It's from a playing style standpoint. It's what is what we're getting out it's here. A wild spectrum. <laughs> we don't want to get off the. <laughs> but off Arkansas the rails. has got somebody that's on that spectrum. It's crazy. Yeah, I like uh, I like Cole here. He says Big Z and Quaintance could be a nasty duo. They really could. I mean, we mentioned earlier that those are those are guys who could probably play together. Yeah. It would all be about really how well a guy like Quaintance could defend out on the perimeter mm -hmm. against some smaller guys. How switchable is he? I did see in that McDonald's All American game, man, like I saw he came off of his initial matchup and helped onto a guard and just straight stripped him. I know it was like one play, but I think Quaintance in that McDonald's All American game had like three or four steals. Like he's just he's just super active defensively. And he's another one of those guys, like I mentioned with Z, he runs on his like on his toes. Like he's not a he's not a, he's not cinder block feet guy. Right. Out there running. He's he's pretty pretty agile. Exactly. Caleb Christian said the big sandwich. <laughs> I like it. 
See, I'm not the only one. Arrowhead KC says, Scotty's spitting. You got bars, man. It's just true. You don't get enough credit for it. I didn't listen to the radio on the way over here as I was workshopping it. (laughs) But, like, for real, like, what Kentucky got this year was, like, a sample of what he can become and can give you – like, he can be even better over a longer stretch the next season, but that next season is going to be just a couple miles from here next year. Man, we're talking uh, we're talking ring rosters over here with man Boogie Flan, Quaintance Knox, and Big Cliff from Rutgers to go with Z. Goodness gracious! I went back and watched Big Cliff's reel again earlier today. He's he's just, a lot of fun. He's not normal. No, he is not. Somebody came in here. Uh, we got Steelix says Caliph KB would be a good six man. I agree. I just don't know. If, I don't think I'm seeing it. Right now, and maybe I don't know. I guess I figured if that was going to happen with a returner, that it just it, like it would have happened. Yeah, you can so see that. I don't know about that one. We'll see. Maybe we'll get a cryptic Instagram thing from or, a, or an IG live from Caleb Battle, and he's out at Taco and Tamale or something in Fayetteville. We we think he's back in town. <laughs> we can get excited. Oh, I mean, he's been man. back home for a while. Yeah, he has. Young Sea Lion says, this is surreal. It still feels a little surreal. Just the whole, like the whole past week, going from losing Must to maybe getting Cal to the intro to, to now getting Z and this roster is starting to be built. It's, uh, it's pretty wild. <laughs> a dude, Shannon R. Yeah, Jonas Adu, apparently, one to, one to keep an eye on. Arkansas is in there. That dude is, he is nice. Yeah. If you have a do and big Z in the front, that's that's the best front court in the country. Hundred percent. I don't. Regardless there's no of, way anybody could match of what that. You have beyond them. Yeah. Shout out to Ole Miss though for having maybe the best undersized front court in the country. Really with good. Malik Dia and yeah. Mikael Brown Jones. That's. I was be... driving in today and got an alert that 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 Dia might be headed to Ole Miss, and I'm just like, dude, Mikael Brown Jones and him. It's that's pretty salty. Yeah, they're gonna have a little squad, man. They are. It's going to yeah. be a, a pretty good team. Beard's a heck of a recruiter. I'm anxious to see what kind of team Kentucky winds up putting together. I mean, they're going to get dudes. Sure. It's, it's still Kentucky, man. Yeah. They're going to get guys for sure. I saw the the big boy, Amari Williams from Drexel, mm-hmm. is visiting down there. Be a good one. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Could be a good see, one. Uh, Tennessee got Darlin Stone Dubar today. That stung a little. Is that official? Gosh. Yeah. He's going to be really good there. He is, yeah. He's not... He is not a Dalton Connect replacement, but he fills a decent amount of that void, man. He will lead them in scoring next year. Yeah, absolutely. Dang, that's a good get for mm-hmm. them. Really good get. All right. We're almost to the bottom here. Really appreciate everybody for chiming in. This is cool. People are excited. They're I pumped, saw a man. comment that said, how do you say Wupik Sui in Croatian? I looked up the <laughs> – I did English to Croatian translation, and I'm just – I'm not even – I'm not going to try. Not worth a try? But – I we mean, might practice it and do it again uh, yeah, tomorrow. That's all open the tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The Silver Sergeant says, this is hog heaven. Our time is now. Still work to be done. Yeah, good point by Dalton Motorsports. It's probably already Matt Zimmerman's favorite player. We got Z. We got Big Z. I cannot wait for their first, what is it, the Razorback Daily? Yeah, with Q and Z and Z. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Q and Z and Big Z. <laughs> Oh, man. Good times. Well, Scotty, how do you feel? They, I mean, they finally got one up off the off the board here. The first domino fell. Does it feel real now? Have you excelled at all? Yeah, for sure. Like, I hit publish on that commitment story, and I'm just like, gosh, I'm really do- I'm doing this. Like, Arkansas actually got him. I w- I've been talking ever since, you know, before he was even in the portal. We thought it was a, a possibility. You know, we're putting that recruiting big board together. And almost like I, I don't know if I, I can't remember if I asked you or not. It was like, what do you, th- Big Z? What do you, what do you think? <sighs> Went ahead and made his profile and was like, maybe I'm dreaming. And then, you know, Arkansas got Cal and dreams are reality now. Yeah, exactly. We got another a salty Kentucky fan in here. Stang man says Pope filled Rupp Arena. Cal didn't have a high school turnout. The the missing context in that statement is incredible and also what do you care they don't they don't hang banners for winning press conferences bud they don't do that so we'll, we'll see you on the hardwood 
24,000 I mean, other people that have as many NCAA tournament wins as he does. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Let's, uh, I mean, congrats, I guess. And that not a high school turnout was several, several thousand people in a, in a torrential I mean, downpour on, seven, on about seven six K. hours of notice yeah. on a Wednesday. So, but... Good job I know filling earlier, up your I know arena. earlier you said that you kind of like the measuring contest. I like all the fuel that's getting added to the fire. I can't – I don't like this the measuring contest. Like, it just <laughs> does not freaking matter. It doesn't matter. Kentucky's excited. Great for y'all. Arkansas is excited. Great for Arkansas. Yeah. Both I just, those, you I, mad, bro? Like, both those things can be I just, can be true. I don't. I don't get it. It's funny to me. Kentucky fans are going to quickly replace Missouri fans in the sense of where every time something happens for Arkansas, it's like that meme that get in there and make it about you. It's exactly <laughs> what they're doing right now. Get over it. You got your coach. Why are you worried about what Cal's no, doing? man. Aside from the fact that he's poaching your good players. Sucks to suck. I can't wait. I, I literally can't wait. I, I love the banter, man. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a sucker for it. The press conference stuff, like the the measuring contest of who had more fans at a press, I never cares, man. Besides, besides Kentucky fans, <laughs> yeah. they really care. Craig Rush says Antigua joining the staff. I don't know. I mean, Matt Norlander reported that on Friday. He was one of the first names I heard in terms of of guys who Cal would be bringing with him. But nothing's been made officially official on that front. And then I know Jeremy Werner over at, at 24-7 Sports in Illinois. Says, I mean, he does a really good job covering that program. Uh, obviously, Antigua was over there for years, and he sounds like he might be interested in a reunion there. Um, Arkansas needs him. I mean, that's Cal sells himself as a you know recruiter and – guy who can get people to the league and a Hall of Fame coach. So, like, he's still going to be able to recruit, but Antigua's a big relationship guy. 100%. And does a lot of work on the recruiting trail, and uh, and he's, he's a shark out there. And he's a, a, a factor in a lot of those freshmen who went to Kentucky initially who Arkansas is hoping they can flip. So, mm -hmm. you know, you'd like to have him. But we'll see. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anything's official either way there yet. I know Cal put out his uh, – this thing on Twitter over the weekend said, we've got to build a staff, we've got to build a roster, and we will. <laughs> it's a very Donald Trumpish statement. <laughs> like, <laughs> thank you. We, we hope so. Confident. But he's a man of his word so far because he's got a player now. It's, For sure. You love to see it. Good place to start. <laughs> All right. I guess we're out of here. I think so. Yeah, we've done enough. This was good, man. Um, man, appreciate everybody. Hopping on dinner time at a Monday night. It's like we said earlier today, we recorded this morning in hopes that that we might be recording live again later to see what was going on with uh, with a commitment pop because, goodness gracious, you crazy people needed it. I know you're glad to have that monkey off your back. A little bit, yeah. Need people to need people to get a good night's sleep. But now it's just who's next. It's just it's yeah. it's gonna be a never ending <laughs> cycle. <laughs> That's exactly right. All right. Thirteenth guy gets added. Who's go, who's who's going to join Lawson Blake as his yeah. next walk on? Who's can gonna, they? Uh, can't they get another guy and instead of give him a scholarship, just pay his tuition and nil? And I was always like, no, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. And then they did it last year, and I was like, damn it, man! Like it's just <laughs> it's never going to end. <laughs> I'll never forget it, man. Oh man. Oh well. Anyway, thank you guys. Appreciate you. For Scotty Borderline, it's been Curtis Wilkerson, Maddie State Sports, it's been the Pot at the Palace. We will be back with you tomorrow, whether it's to talk about some other basketball related stuff or maybe the Hogs will get another commit. Who knows? Either way, we'll be with you. Appreciate you guys for rocking with us. We'll catch you soon.